646. The 20th annual Aztec New Year celebration takes place on Saturday and Sunday, March 10th and March 11th from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. This community gathering at Emma Prush Park includes dancing, native food, and kids' activities. The park is located at 647 South King Road in San Jose. For details, call 650-642-0100. The community calendar is produced by members of the First Voice Apprenticeship Program. Send your listing at least four weeks in advance to KPFA Box 51. 1929 Martin Luther King Jr. Way in Berkeley, California, 94704. Or email us at calendar at kpfa.org. Tell us if your event is wheelchair accessible. To hear this calendar again, call 510-848-6767, extension 621. This calendar is also online at kpfa.org. You're listening to 94.1 KPFA, 89.3 KPFB in Berkeley, 88.1 KFCF in Fresno, K24ABR in Santa Cruz or on the web at kpfa.org. It's 701, up next, full circle. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Full Circle, your cultural affairs radio magazine produced by members of the First Voice Apprenticeship Program. The show is written, produced, and is broadcasting live from Huchin, occupied Ohlone territory known to settlers as the Bay Area. Tonight, graduate apprentice audio desperado Ephraim Colbert returns to co-host a special fun drive show with me, sharing a loving story of self-determination and art as effective tools for social change. It has been a while, Kat. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. On tonight's show, uh, we are joined by two artists, a filmmaker and a poet. We'll share clips from Karina Epperlein's film, Finding the Gold Within, which features poet Darius Simpson, who will perform live from his latest work, Conversion Theory. And it's fun drive time here at KPFA. We'll be asking for your support from both the station and our beloved apprenticeship program. All that tonight on Full Circle. Stay, Stay with, with us. us. Good evening, everyone, and welcome again to Full Circle. We are your hosts, Ephraim Colbert and Kat Petru. We are in Fun Drive here at KPFA and are so excited to welcome our guest for the evening, Karina Epperlein, who wrote, directed, and produced the film Finding the Gold Within, which follows Alchemy Inc., an organization based in Akron, Ohio, committed to empowering young black men. Our other guest tonight is Darius Simpson, who was featured in the film and will be joining us to reflect upon his experience with Alchemy Inc., and share poems from his book, Conversion Theory. Let's take a listen to the trailer for Finding the Gold Within. I have my uncle. I mean, that's kind of my biggest male influence. He sells drugs. Everything he do is wrong. I got the aspect that I can't do this shit. I'm going to be a statistic. Hey, uh, thanks for sharing that. He who conceals his disease cannot expect to be cured. What we attempt to do is recreate the temple of Asclepius. Instead of chanting, we drum. Instead of healing through dreams, we heal through the myth. That journey to another place, long, long ago. I've never been able to just be a normal kid growing up and hearing the white snake myth. I felt like that was me. You're coming out of your comfort zone, completely new person. And all of a sudden, the bottom they fell into a hole. Either he had a death wish or he was running an experiment on how fast a black man would turn his car around when angry. 
that I threatened a kid. I just took it real far a couple times. There's times where I wouldn't say anything. If you meet any college athlete, ask them just out the blue. If football stopped, what would you do? This ain't right. This ain't, oh no, hold on, man. I got some stuff to say, dog. They talk about the black male code, and that's still real. My hat's down, I turn it backwards so they see my face. Other people's low expectations gives me something to push against. It makes me try harder. You have been prepared to face this monster that you're running into now. I hope you don't think you wasn't supposed to face it. Alchemy really exposes to the young men in the group our worth, our value within society. We were working with the seventh grader boys the other day and seeing them identify some of the things in the myth. It's just something that so many people don't have. These myths, I can see it in myself. They're embedded in my thinking. How can we show people that we are the heroes? Welcome back to Full Circle on 94.1 FM KPFA right here at the Pacifica Mothership in Berkeley. You just heard the trailer for Finding the Gold Within, a documentary film by one of our special guests in studio tonight, Karina Epperlein. She joins us live along with Darius Simpson, whose voice you just heard in the trailer. Thank you both so much for being here tonight. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. And just a reminder, we are in our winter fun drive. And as a thank you for your support this evening, we're offering the film Finding the Gold Within for $80. You can also get it as a combo package along with Darius's book, Conversion Theory, for $100. And the book alone is available for $50. Before we get into our next clip, we want to take a moment to give you out the number and the website to donate. That number is 1-800-439-5732. And if you're listening online, you can donate securely by going to kpfa.org and just click on the Donate tab. Of course, your generous support is what keeps KPFA and the apprenticeship program going. The number again is 1-800-439-5732 or hop online and donate securely at kpfa.org. So let's share a bit more from the film Finding the Gold Within. And when we return, we'll speak with Karina and Darius. How do you think society sees you? How do you think society sees you? There, I got this drive to be heard. Cause I feel like society really doesn't see me at all. So it's like, if you're not gonna see me, you gonna damn sure hear me. You walk past me, like, oh yeah, that's just that dude. Literally, they know I'm gonna change the of the world. Sean. For the people who know me, like that type of society, they know me as a hard worker. Somebody who's not a stranger to hard work and a good athlete and no education comes first. But for somebody who hasn't heard of me or doesn't know me, they just view me as the their definition of a typical black urban male. So what's a typical black urban man, Brandon? Perception of the typical black urban man is kind of like the world's worst fear. The world knows that we got it inside of us, but we choose to do the wrong thing. And, you know, the world really doesn't really understand why we're doing the wrong thing just because they don't know the spots that we've been in. But at the same time, we the biggest fear because really when we get our shit together, we make it rain down. We fear, like, period. Like, people are just scared of us. Like, well, if we succeed and then we just build on that, it's, it's a wrap, basically. Working at the Air National Office, I've become a lot more in tune with the way America affects other countries and the way their countries affect us. My interest in this subject has really grown over the past two semesters. Did you talk to him about that already? I was leaning towards moving my major to global communication and just graduating with a minor in theater or a minor in the fine arts. I would like to become more culturally sound, going out, actually learning a different language, uh, experiencing a new way of life instead of being in Akron or Kent or just Ohio for that matter. I've seen people come in who have been completely just scared of black people in general, just because of the media and the way they portray them. I think it was a Saudi Arabian student. He came into the office. He requested not to have a black male as his conversation partner. And my coworker, she asked him why. He said because he can understand the way they talk, he like the way they dress. He said they were violent, that he was scared that they would like, hurt him. It just really caught me on guard that it's really that strong, that one stereotype of like the black male Racism and prejudice is still alive now. From my hat, um, this button, it says we are epic. It's um, a program I'm in. 
for a group I'm in called Epic Seven. It's sort of like creating a community of Kent campus. We know that the campus is predominantly white. There's a lot of segregation, not purposeful, but it's there specifically because white and black students don't mesh that well. Oh, we actually had a march on Monday for Trayvon Martin, um, walking to The Rock. What I felt that day, it was great to not only see our people as a race together, it was good to see people of all races together mm -hmm. fighting for human rights, not just yeah. one race. Oh, oh, you're black, so we got to stick together. Oh, you're white, so we got to stick together. It's all about humankind. We mm -hmm. all came from mm -hmm. one human, so... It's yeah. all about humankind. It's not about... Like, like I've talked to you about this before. Like, exactly. when people come up to me, they're like, that white man, it's the white man. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it's not the white man. Like, right. you letting it happen. It gets exactly. you. You have, you have somewhat... You have enough power to get away from that stereotype, to be honest. Exactly. Like, for real. They talk about the black code, the black male code, and that's still real. Like, you, I, no, I'm even careful about it. Man, I keep my hands out of my pockets. But I walk in the store, if my hat's down, I turn it backwards so they see my face. When I have my hood up, I take my hood down. Well, I'm very aware what's seen as the threat, what's seen as, like, gentle and fine. Like, I'm very really careful about that, especially up here. experiences where I just I got this this hate and this anger for white men because as I came home and I'm <clears throat> one of the first things I was rolling the car with Reese and this this car full of white boys yo nigger to me out the car like it was like it was a fucking game show and I told I'm like I'm like either he had a death wish or he was running an experiment on how fast a black man would turn his car around when angry I'm, I'm faced with that a lot like you say something racist then it it, it sounds okay so I'm I'm getting for more be safe. Thanks. Um, hey, hey I, I had no idea here again that you guys were dealing with the anger that you have in, in certain situations. Write this quote down. You can have people of your kind who are not your color and those of your color who are not your kind. Just always want to keep an open mind, man. Thanks, Darius. Uh, be careful. Be careful, brother. Okay? Be careful, man. You've lived in your little environment, and it's been cool, and things have worked out. When you see the bigger world issues, I know it may be shocking at times, and you may personally feel wounded, but there are some tough, strong issues, and many of them could be vicious and violent towards you, but you got to know that that's out there. So when you go out, you don't take you for a loop, you know? Really work on yourself. Good job, brothers. Myths are not just for putting children to sleep, but for waking adults up. So while we're doing the myths, I mean, uh, it's not just for the youth. Okay. Oh, it's waking us up <laughs> okay. Welcome back First to full Welcome back to Full Circle here on 94.1 FM KPFA. I'm Kat Petru, one of the current apprentices with KPFA's First Voice Apprenticeship Program, and I'm joined tonight by graduate apprentice Ephraim Colbert. You just heard a clip from one of our gifts to you tonight, Karina Epperling's film, Finding the Gold Within. Karina joins us live in studio along with Darius Simpson, who is featured in the film. This clip we just played is very powerful. As an African-American male, I not only relate to what the young men like yourself, Darius, are saying and have been impacted financially and emotionally based on society's interpretations of what being black is. For example, one moment you can be perceived as a threat, or in another, a funny black guy. The mixed messaging can be very confusing. Darius, how has working with Alchemy Inc. and being able to express your feelings on this helped you grow as an individual? Well, having a, a circle of folks who look like me um, to break down the things we were going through 
was uh, very calming and allowed us to sustain and not uh, act out in different ways because we're all having these experiences. And without that container to release those experiences, um, it tends to come off in more negative and more self-destructive ways. So um, on the one hand, it was just great to sit, sit in a circle of people who look like me and either talk about race directly or talk about anything else that we were experiencing, but to have that safe container that I knew I had support in. Mm-hmm. So amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. And Karina, um, I'm really curious to know what, first of all, we haven't heard from you tonight yet, so I'm so happy mm-hmm. to have you here. What was your inspiration to make this film? Uh, it was it was before the rise of Black Lives Matter movement hit the mainstream. Um, so I'm curious how you encountered Alchemy Inc. and what it was like getting to know uh, and building trust and working with the young men. Yeah, uh, this idea came in 2010. I had met Kwame at a conference and wasn't going to make a film right away, but I thought his work was really amazing. In 2011, I finally uh, was asking some funder if they would help out a little bit. And Kwame was saying, yeah, that would be great if he could do something. And I had seen a photo of his group when they were 11 years old, group photo, and then when they were 17, 18, ready to go off to college and uh, graduate from the, the alchemy. And I was struck how open the faces were, how alive in both, not just the young, but also the older. I really wanted to meet them and I wanted to know the work. So I went out in, it's exactly seven years ago, 2011 in April, and I uh, was doing a scouting trip and introducing myself, meeting them, filming it only a tiny bit. Uh, and I was just immediately seeing this is very powerful and this is an environment I feel very comfortable in. It's close to my heart, everything they're doing. I myself uh, have been into mythology, into Jungian psychology and uh, theater and uh, holding circles. So I was familiar with some of it. Of course, not exactly what Kwame does was so impressive. And I kept coming back for the next four years. Uh, three, four times a year. And uh, my my suggestion was that we make a film <laughs> to the young men, really. I choose six of them as the protagonists and wanted to follow them through college to show how incredible the work of alchemy is to set the ground mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. F- uh, for something where society doesn't pay attention. They pay attention when young black men are in prison. Right. And I didn't want to make a film about that really a celebration of when it works what is that like and do other people know about that really about that fascinating journey how it can work and uh, so I suggested to the young men that they come forward who they really are which is, is of course what they're already doing in the work with uh, with uh, alchemy and so that wasn't a super stretch but uh the six protagonists that I choose, and I call them protagonists because they're writing their own story in their life, but also in the film. Mm-hmm. And I wanted them to come really forward with who they are. Darius, do you remember first meeting Karina? Um, I remember the film introduction, uh, the circle where we talked about not looking at the camera. Oh, and, like, sure. Not really, like meeting Karina, but meeting her in a more... Uh, like a more separated formal kind of yeah. yeah and it's like I didn't really meet Karina I just we were introduced to the film team and it was just this woman with a camera doing all these weird angles so yeah I remember those I don't remember like the initial hug of meeting Karina but I remember the first couple of times that she was filming do you remember your reaction finding out that there was going to be a film made about you about alchemy mm-hmm. yeah um, when we found out about alchemy we were all like We were excited, but then when we got the email about, like, becoming protagonists for the film, I personally just thought it meant more more interviews, because we had done some interviews, everyone was was doing interviews, so when we got the email to, like, be a protagonist, yeah, okay, two more interviews than the rest of the people, that's fine, but here I am, (laughs) (laughs) famous. (laughs) Were you going to add something? Yeah, I was going to say, he wasn't there at the very beginning, actually, he Ah. missed out that. I saw him in one... One group you had, and then he wasn't there for that that first, uh, uh, you were gone in that first workshop that I mm. actually filmed just with my small camera. So he missed out some of, some of that very first. Uh, but, it you know, it was more than the two, and which was astonishing to all of them, that four years 
four times a year, me coming back and more and more and now do this and now write and now look, <laughs> let's let's play around here with th- these visuals and these visuals standing on the tree and <laughs> yeah. drumming some more. And <laughs> the process of, of collaborating and co-creating works of art, cultural production is something near and dear to all four of us and definitely really, really central to what we're doing at KPFA, what we're learning at the First Voice Apprenticeship Program. So a reminder to everyone to uh, pledge your support for what we're doing tonight and um, that you'll that you can receive the book uh, Darius's book Conversion Theory for fifty dollars, um, the film Finding the Gold Within for eighty, and you can get both for a hundred dollars. And the number to call is one eight hundred. Four three nine. Thank you. Five seven three two. <laughs> You'd think I'd have it memorized. One eight hundred four three nine five seven three two. One eight hundred Hey KPFA. Or go online and pledge securely at kpfa.org. Oh, and we have a match. Um, Danielle Phoenix in Berkeley for three hundred and sixty five dollars. Please show up for this vital work and match that donation. We have forty minutes left in the hour. Our goal is to raise. Um, at least $1,500, so please call or pledge online now. So to learn more about Darius, the best way to do so is to really hear from him uh, yourself and you'll understand how timely and profound his work is. So can you please share a poem with us? I'd love to. This poem is titled, An Ending That Makes Sense, in parentheses, Dry Snitching on Maurice. When I was 13, me and my best friend tried to steal a broomstick that didn't belong to us from someone else's lair. A witch teleported to her porch across the street, cursed our cauldron skin, banished us back to the black neighborhood we withdrew from. The spell kicked in immediately. I only lived two blocks away at the time, but the effects were so powerful, I retreated to the next village over because it felt like I belonged there because I believed when she told me to go back where I came from. We learned to escape at an early age. Generations of dissipation passed down from our fathers and the trees that raised them. My uncle once laughed so hard, a bullet carried him out in a casket. His dad was so good at dissolving, some say he never existed. My aunt no invisibility too, taught my cousin how to see right through me. Now. If we could get our hands on the good stuff, we lack the ability to shapeshift, become anew in an instant. The illusion that transforms mass shooters into misunderstood gamers. You know, the way a headline performs metamorphosis, remodel a lifeless skeleton into a Hulk-like demon, how our spirit go from homeless to haunting in the blink of a body cam, how we get murdered, then subpoenaed to show up in court for our own defense, how the most credible witness is also the one who can no longer speak. We want the potion that controls prison proportions. We demand the cloak that allows us safe passage home after the blue lights flash. That old enchantment the Constitution cast blew right past us. So we need them ingredients. We'll spice up the recipe, bring the right seasonings, make a curse of our own, pin safety to our bones, a juxtaposition to the original jinx, where we be the exception. Never have to be twice as nothing, because our singular does the trick. Poof, Barbara gets her house back. Poof, a dragon exhales and burns the head off of all the Confederate statues. Poof, anybody who reaches for a gun turns into glitter. Poof, in a rare turn of events, black boy dies. We all mourn the loss. The end. Poof, black bear is returned her cub. Folded neatly on the front porch, not a crease out of place. All the black boys marched the neighborhood half-mast, not a single file out of order. Poof. At a moment's notice, we are gone. Whole heartbeats intact. Just making music somewhere. The credits roll exactly when they're supposed to. Wow. That was really powerful. Thank you for sharing that with us, Darius. Thank you. For those of you just joining us, that was Darius Simpson live in studio performing his poem, An Ending That Makes Sense, from his latest book, Conversion Theory, which can be yours tonight for $50. 
Darius, this is the first book you've published. How did it all, isn't it? Is it not? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How did it all come together? Well, um, it originally started as 25 poems because I was turning 25 and I'm, I'm 25, by the way. Um, uh, I was turning 25 in December and I hadn't published a book yet and I was feeling the pressure. I was feeling like I was really getting old and I decided... So <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I decided it was time. Um, and the book is really just uh, a sign for me, a symbol of, you know, putting things out there before they're perfect and, you know, continuing to build an acknowledgement that you can't really build on anything until there's a foundation. So, um, yeah, it started off as 25 poems and I had these 25 things written on a, a whiteboard. I was like, hmm, what are 25 things I would demand from the government in order from, for me to be silent? So I had the those 25 and I just kept writing and And what do you mean for cause I know cuz I've heard you talk about this before mm -hmm. but for people who who haven't what do you mean demand so that you would be silent what do you mean by that mm, So the book is set up each poem is a demand from the United States government in exchange for uh silence so the first poem which is not an intro but it really is an intro it sets up a scenario in which the government is asking for silence um, where the protests that started in 2014, the re rebellion in Ferguson, never stopped. And there was never a, a time for uh, negotiations or demands issued. So the government said, you know, OK, in exchange for this disruption ceasing, what what would you take? So um, that's what I mean when it, in exchange for the silence. Right. So for the for protest wouldn't need to happen anymore. Yeah. Because so, yeah, because. People understand Black Lives Matter. Yeah. And stop killing. Indeed. To put it simply, yeah. plainly, right? <laughs> okay. Um, do you have a question? Well, yes, I do. Uh, my question is for Karina. So, I mean, you've known Darius now for a couple of years. And so you've probably seen some of his process and his growth and development. What is that like for you, like hearing him now? Well, I know Darius now for seven years, so <laughs> I knew him back then when he was 17, 18, and uh, right away saw that he's a special spirit, which really all of the young men in the circle were, but the six that I choose, they were, they were just intuitively people that I would be able to have probably a, a growing relationship, if luck is, and it was. Darius uh, just is... Right away, I knew he's incredibly talented and he's incredibly determined. And you heard that even in the film clip when he mm -hmm. says, I want right. to change the world. So and that is throughout the film. His voice is strong and persistent. And he has the last word in the film, too, when he says he wants to be heard by everybody in the world. And to see him, it's it's just a privilege to, you know, see a young man. By the way, I turned 64 in December. Yeah, <laughs> so. and we'll talk about that, the age gap. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's important. Mm -hmm. So it's an incredible joy. Yeah, yeah. well, and uh, thank you for b having the courage to put your work out before you think it might be perfect because people need to hear this. And you can. And uh, the role of storytelling I want to bring up is central in Alchemy Inc., in the film, uh, in the art of radio, in the book, uh, in conversion theory. So up next, we'll share another clip from the film, Finding the Gold Within. But first, a reminder that this film and this book can be yours. The film for 80, um, the book for 50, or get them both for $100 total. Please call us now. We need your support. The number is 1-800-439-5732. If you're listening online, you can donate securely on our website, kpfa.org. Again, 1-800-439-5732. That's 1-800-HEY-KPFA. Um, please, 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 please call. While you're calling, let's listen to another clip from Finding the Gold Within. I take telling stories that serious. To me, it's like the old African griot. It is a transfer of information, of learning and you will get out of it what you need to get out of it. And I, I do believe that stories heal. We hold true to the fact wounded people will continue to wound others until they are healed. Twenty. 
11. The name of the myth today is the king's ears. Once upon a time, there was a well-known mighty, mighty king who had everything that a man desired. However, his secret was that he had ears like a goat under a beautiful crown. Like all men, he had to get a haircut. And he would summon barbers to come. And after they cut his hair, and every one of them would say, King, you look handsome. But however, you still have those goat ears. And he would draw his sword and kill them right on the spot. We're going to pause right there for a moment. As always, just write down what resonates with you. No right or wrong answers. Sergio. Well, what resonated with me was how I got to him to where it made him want to kill people. Mm. And it shows, like, the insecurities about itself. If you're born with it, you just have to accept it because that's what makes you different and unique. Ooh. Okay. This myth here deals with our uh, deformities, our insecurities. He who conceals his disease cannot expect to be cured. Now, his crown is what distinguishes him from everybody. What happens when you remove your crown? Let's get Stacy. Coming, I can't. Over the past few months, it's been hit because I haven't really been able to study or focus on anything, really. Like, sometimes I get stuck on campus, and I ain't really got nowhere to stay. Like, I have to stay, like, in a lounge somewhere and chill to the morning. Like, stuff is hard. So that's where I am right now, and that crown has been off. Thanks, Stacy. They say it's adversity that introduces a man to himself. Tyler. I think, like, why stuff happened the way it did. And, like, what, what was the intentions of, of things happening like that? You know, my sister passing away and everything. Sometimes I sit in my room and I cry, like, and I, and I kind of just ask, like, why did you take her, like, when she was so young? Like Shevin was saying, it's not fair. Like, I feel like life is not fair, but then again, it's like, well, what do you live for when, when the stuff that, that you try to do right goes wrong? Thanks, man. That's cool. Thanks. Uh, Richard Pryor said, you know, some bitch was happening, and Richard Pryor said, why me, brother? He said, why not you, brother? <laughs> okay? And that's how life is, man. Thanks, Tyler. Welcome back to... Welcome back to Full Circle here on 94.1 KPFA. I'm Ida Desperado, and we just played a clip from the film Finding the Gold Within, available for our fun drive this evening. Tonight we are in conversation with the director, Karen Aperlein, and one of the film's stars, Darius Simpson. As a thank you for your support this evening, we are offering a combo of the film and Darius's book of poetry for $100. Call 1-800-439-5732. That's 1-800-HEY-KPFA or go online to kpfa.org. Make a secure donation. And I just wanted to thank everybody that has donated so far. We were able to make our match and we are only a few hundred dollars away from reaching our $1,500 goal. Maybe like six. We still need like six or $700. So please keep, keep the calls, keep the pledges going. Yes. Darius, what I find so great about the Alchemy program is the sharing of storytelling and mythology as a tool for self-examination. Did working with Alchemy Inc. impact your creative expression and storytelling in the form of poetry? Mm -hmm. um, so we started doing workshops with Alchemy. Um, I, we would actually do creative writing after we heard the myths. So there was some um, close proximity connection between the myths that we were listening to and creating poetry about them. But oh, also, cool. I think I said in the film, but uh, it showed me that so these myths were these these third person stories, and we took 
related them to our personal lives and ended up talking about what we were actually going through on a day to day. So from that, I took like you could connect a lemon to a skyscraper. And, um, yeah, it carried over my poetry. And I discovered slam poetry around the same time of doing those circles and those workshops with alchemy. So, yeah, pretty much broke metaphor right open for me. And that's in the film that that always impressed me. You compare a, a lemon to a skyscraper. It's definitely a wonderful part in the film there. Mm -hmm. And I noticed this emphasis on self-examination for sure, but also alchemy is obviously so community oriented from sitting in the circle and uh, sharing stories, ch sharing, you know, what you said, going like what's going on on the day to day basis, playing the drums, honoring ancestry and elders in this way, and then bringing in the youth. Um, and so I, I mentioned, right, like we've come back to this, this, um, the idea of intergenerational work. But so Karina, um, Feel free to share on any of that. And then I also wanted to ask you, this is, well, do you want to speak to any of that first? I wanted to ask you a question about storytelling. Go ahead. Ask me. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you. I know each moment of this film is, is really intentional. So as a filmmaker, how do you engage the practice of storytelling? Yeah, uh, for me, it's an art form. And I see myself in that as a creator, as a poet. And the first thing is to listen. Uh, before I even start a project, I listen deeply. What what would be good to be said? What would be good to give to society now that I can see, that I can transform into a film and that gives something to everybody? And often it ends up in my films to be something that's in the dark, that people don't look at that, they don't see it, they don't want to see it maybe, it's uncomfortable. So I try to work it deeply and bring the light to it so that people can embrace both the shadow and the light. Mm -hmm. And that transformation is important. And of course, in the course in filmmaking, for me, every word, every sound, every little gesture, the framing, everything is very, very important. So I'm in that process. I love it, but it's thousands and thousands of hours. Right, right. There's always so much more that goes into cultural production than what you see in the final product. And when we make our own art, media, news, and entertainment, we challenge the status quo. Everyone in this room, Karina Darius, the First Voice Apprenticeship Program, and KPFA do just this. Um, and we don't do it in a vacuum. You, our listeners, are so critical in this process. And our shows, it's not just supposed to be us speaking together. Um, they're meant to incite dialogue and to be shared. That's so on point, Kat. And we would love to share with you this wonderful <coughs> book and documentary. Call in now to 1-800-439-5732. The book is yours for 50, the movie for 80. But you know, and I know, you really want the combo. I mean, <laughs> come on, he's in the movie. These two items are meant to be together. <laughs> People be, get both for $100. <laughs> Call us now at 1-800-439-5732. All right, so let's keep it moving. Darius, could you please share another poem with us? Sure. This is called A Clear Dance Floor for Black Boys Who Can't Sit Still. It's on page 75 of Convergent Theory. Dance is the safest way to travel when you're always a target. Rodney King was the first music video to go viral solely for the beat. Music videos are where black boys perfect dark magic safely. Away from the weight of the world's expectations, we can do with our bodies whatever we want. And it ain't so much a dance as it is a reclaiming of land we was told was never ours to begin with. I learned how to moonwalk next to a vacuum. And I still take steps back when life sucks. In sixth grade, I learned that my body was a sermon. I learned how to pray with my feet. Back when dance was the only religion we knew, I was baptized sliding backwards at a talent show. I thought it was fun. Didn't know I was preparing for battle. Some say... The thriller video Zombie is the last time they saw Michael Jackson black in public. Wouldn't you change your skin tone if you found out the world only loved your video because the black boy was already dead because he slid across the screen with his hands up? It wasn't that the first time we saw brown skin waste away to a rhythm but called it pop music. Trayvon Martin was a remix with no features. George m misread the title, thought it said no future. Mike Brown was an acapella sample of the same song. They snatching kings and collecting royalties, I used to believe. 
that I could dodge bullets if I practiced hard enough. Before I knew my father could break dance, I knew the cold silence of a traffic stop, the chemical imbalance I felt when hearing sirens. I knew the choreography to keeping my hands visible in case of combustion, how the wrong move could lead to me never dancing again. The day a cop told me I didn't belong in a neighborhood I grew up in, my tongue was a wet fuse, my voice a pinned grenade, my fists were nuclear missiles, his mouth pressing launch codes. My body knew that it was supposed to be a chain reaction, but didn't know why. That night, I danced in an empty parking lot for two hours just to avoid detonating. And I think, I think all us black boys fall into bomb making this way as an attempt to defuse a weapon we inherited, black boys dance to show that our bloodstream is jet fuel, to prove that our spines be rocket ship besides. What threat can America make against a body that has already proven it will blow up on command? I never asked my dad about the first time he danced his body into a landmine. I just assumed that he also went through something that made him believe he needed to replace his joints with explosions. I figured he knew one day a cop was going to throw him to the ground. I thought breakdancing was his way of practicing what to do when he got there. The next time you see a black boy shake so hard you think his back's broken, consider that we break our own bones just to prove we're still in control of them. Don't ask why we always dance and ask what kind of country makes its people feel like they're safest when moving. We dance because being black it's stressful. We dance because we got lives to live. We dance because after a long day, sometimes defying gravity is the only rebellious thing our bodies have time to do. We dance because you can't hit what you can't catch. Our dance is alluding to war zone. Our dance is a form of combat ever so often. I have flashbacks to the battles when I get too drunk to remember that I'm not a soldier anymore. But the music is just intoxicating enough for me not to care in those moments. I remember the living room that I turned into a training camp, make my limbs into a bomb shelter, and let the beat blow me away. Mm. Mm. You are listening to Full Circle here on 94.1 FM KPFA. For those of you just joining, that was Darius Simpson with his poem, Clear Dance Floor for Black Boys Who Can't Sit Still. I am biased. This is the Darius before the poem said it's on page 75. For those of you um, receiving a copy, you know where to find that poem. It is the first page that I turned to when I got my copy of this book. Uh, it is one of my favorites. Um, so... As mentioned, it is Fun Drive. We need to raise $500 more. Please call us 1-800-439-5732. Go online, kpfa.org, and pledge securely. The book is 50. The film, Finding the Gold Within, is 80. And both you get from a hun- uh, for $100. And what a powerful combo of gifts to bring home. We dance because being black is stressful. There was a point in my life when I was a modern dancer, and coincidentally enough, what kept me involved was the ability to release the stresses of the day in an artistic manner. Um, and Kat, you were also a dancer, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's been a central part of my life since I could walk. And Karina, um, you danced too, didn't you? Well, I was a professional dancer in one of my many previous lives, but, <laughs> you know, I think dance for me dancing is maybe also when i make a film Mm. because i dance with the themes i dance with the people with the moods with uh with my own vision i dance with that i you know there's a lot to dance with and Mm. of course this poem uh, and the film are specific specific to being young black and male but we know that oppression comes in many forms and i think having that physical uh release is is vital for all of us and that the theme of racism and also connecting across lines of social difference are really central in this next film clip so let's uh take a listen once again to finding the gold within there i had this a couple experiences where i just i got this this hate and this anger for white men because as i came home and I'm, <clears throat> one of the first things, I was rolling in the car with Reese, and this, this car full of white boys, yo, nigger, 
to me out, out the car like it was like it was a f- game show and i told i'm like i'm like either he had a death wish or he was running an experiment on how fast a black man would turn his car around when angry i'm, I'm faced with that a lot like you say something racist then it, it, it sounds okay so I'm, I'm confused like is this okay or am, am i tripping it's hard not to generalize and just say off f- more and be safe thanks um hey, hey I, I had no idea here again that you guys were dealing with the anger that you have in in certain situations. Write this quote down. You can have people of your kind who are not your color and those of your color who are not your kind. Just always want to keep an open mind, man. Thanks, dears. Uh, Be careful. Be careful, brother. Okay? Be careful, man. You've lived in your little environment and it's been cool and things have worked out. When you see the bigger world issues, I know it may be shocking at times, and you may personally feel wounded, but there are some tough, strong issues, and many of them can be vicious and violent towards you, but you got to know that that's out there. So when you go out, it don't take you for a loop, you know? Really work on yourself. Good job, brothers. are not just for putting children to sleep, but for waking adults up. So while we're doing the myths, I mean, uh, it's not just for the youth. Okay. Oh, it's waking us up too. <laughs> okay. Welcome back to Full Circle. We just played a clip from Karina Eberlin's film, Finding the Gold Within, who is in the studio with us this evening. We also have Darius Simpson here featured in this clip we just played. This portion of the film definitely resonates with me, Darius. I've been put in similar positions myself. Uh, being on the receiving end of a racist joke and I didn't handle it productively as a matter I, a fact I kind of handed it a zero tolerance policy towards those things if you understand what I'm saying and mm-hmm. I wonder from you how did the lessons you learned through Alchemy Inc. help you to deal with these matters? Well a lot of what we learned in Alchemy was uh, self-preservation and that we would go through all these situations that would uh, attempt to chip away at us or attempt to actually take our lives or pieces of our light. And it was important for them to always reiterate that we had to do what we had to do to make sure that we were set. So making a decision to respond to this racist joke or this racist situation could lead us to a position to not be all that we could be uh, was one end. But also... um, Having dealt with what I dealt with my first two years of college, a lot of what I talk about in the film is that first two years I wasn't really dealing with um, overtly racist things until I went to college. So the that's when the quotes that we learned in Alchemy really started resonating. Mm-hmm. Quotes like, um, he who conceals his wound cannot expect to be healed. Mm-hmm. So I was going through and I had these feelings and I was angry about it. And then all but for me expressing it to my friends or expressing it to my poetry or to my mother, it would have res- it would uh, festered inside of me and turned into something else. So, mm. thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, yeah. There, there's you. What you just said made me think of another quote, but I can't think of it off the top. So I'll just go ahead and and say that healing with community is so important, which is why we need um, to support the work and people like. Um, like Alchemy, like Karina, like Darius, like the apprenticeship program, like KPFA, um, I can speak for myself. Having an outlet like Full Circle, like this show, um, like you all to come together and discuss uh, conversations like this has been 100% life-changing. And as a listener-supported radio station, being able to produce shows like this depends upon you, our listeners. Please, please show your support for this work by calling 1-800-439-5732. Go online to donate securely at kpfa.org. Um, again, 1-800-439-5732 or 1-800-HEY-KPFA. We have a few hundred dollars left we need to raise within the next 12 minutes. So please give us a call or go online. And just a reminder in return for your um g- as a gift, you will receive the film for $80 and Darius's book for 50 or I would highly suggest the combo for 100 
And another reason organizations like Alchemy Inc., the First Voice Apprenticeship Program, and KPFA are so important is because they offer an outlet for visionary creative <coughs> expression, which is undeniable in Darius's poetry, even though he thinks it was an imperfect first attempt. Um, so let's jump to this next poem, A New Planet. This poem, like Kat mentioned, is called A New Planet on page seven of Conversion Theory. Quote, I've left Earth in search of a new God. I do not trust the God you have given us. Unquote. Denez Smith. And on the first day, heaven and earth took off their headphones, asked where all the rhythm went, heard an escape black hole strolling the solar system past curfew, blasting public enemy, breaking the sound barrier. Both planes rotated and caught the universe in orbit. A panther zodiac symbol struck a supernova over the head with a broken record player, used the needle to shoot up. The skylight bled all over the Milky Way. Imagine there was another Big Bang. Well, this sound was his older brother. They share the same parents but grew up in different atmospheres. And on the second day, the ground of this new land formed a layer of hydrogen, transformed helium into a livable, livable breath. The people here had fly kicks from jump, rope chains swimming in gold to keep them down to new earth. Every step, a tiny explosion of color, Stride a harmony of chain reactions, feet tuned to float before walking and know, this time, that is not a metaphor for death, euphemism for phantom-like feelings. Here we float, literally, fully embodied, and on the third day, there was darkness, period. And it lived as long as it wanted to, and all the skin inhabited by it was blessed by the sun, and this new sun promised to never burn it, but even still... On this new globe, being burned or having a dark anything was a compliment. And all the shadow children looked at each other on the playground and saw God staring back at them. And after recess, they returned to a dim classroom where the teacher, darker than them, taught them how their skin was a symphony. Taught them how self-love was the only song they'd need to pass life's exam. And on the fourth day, black God invited her friends over to talk shit about the old earth. And on the fifth day, old earth calls someone to go regulate what sounds like a party without a curfew, a life missing its roof, a tinted human with the top down. Authorities walk the air for days, slip back to gravity empty handed. They say they found nothing or there was so much black up there. We couldn't decide whether to kill or take from it. And on the sixth day, death arrives on this new world with a fruit basket. Begs we let bygones be bygones. A job is just a job, he says. Mike's suicide note caught between his teeth. My grandfather's blood sugar wrapped around his pinky. Cloak dripping wet with hashtags. Carrying Tracy's cry for help in his eyes. We take his throat as recompense on sight. Without a word or a warning. We pass the void from one hand to the next. A response to those who have had the words snatched right out of their brain mid-sentence and their thoughts spread out on the corner of that old earth. We return death's bones to his parents a whisper, show them the stillness this boy has forced on our lives. They take him without question as if they learn to expect this expiration. And on the seventh day, that song our parents used to put on when it was time to clean the house bellows to every crevice of this place. On the Sabbath, we don hardwood floors. We remember how joy and pine saw have a way of lingering in your clothes hours after you clean the smile off your face. My grandma and your grandma are the fire we sit around to hear stories from. Someone calls us human from afar. And we remember a time this word fit when we subscribed to limits, when we was pretending to be two sizes less than, when we was punished for expansion we cry so hard we leave the stars soaked, collect enough shine from the runoff to light the whole planet for months. Black God joins us for brunch. It is fresh, we cheer. Chalice is raised high enough for the sun to sip. Love so long our hearts pick it for lunch breaks. Break nothing that wasn't supposed to or didn't sign up to shatter beforehand. 
We all write left-handed. And this is the only strange thing we see about each other. That was Darius Simpson with A New Planet, one of the poems in his book, Conversion Theory. For those just tuning in, this is Full Circle on 94.1 K. FM KPFA. We are your hosts, Ephraim Colbert, and I'm Kat Petru. And in addition to Darius joining us live in studio, we have filmmaker Karina Epperlein. Um, when I first heard that poem, my friend Uzo and I both had the same thought, which was that we wanted to see a dance video made to it. I'm just putting that out there. Um, Ephraim, can you tell folks what they'll get if for their support tonight? Definitely. Uh, for your support tonight, we are offering the book, Conversion Theory, for $50, as well as the DVD for $80. Uh, but we have a combo pack available for $100. We also have a couple of thank yous for the people that have donated so far tonight. That is uh, Alex in Guerneville. My mom, Sally Petru. Thanks, Mom. Vika and JC, graduate apprentices. Thank you so much. Yeah. Barbara Whipper, uh, Whipperman in Oakland. And then a few more people in Oakland, Palo Alto, Berkeley, and also Oakland. Thank you all so very much for your support tonight. You know we need it. And we really appreciate it. Uh, so let's see. We have a few more minutes left. Do you want to uh, ta- <laughs> do you want to make this connection to Black Panther really quickly? Sure. Okay. So um, Black Panther is a really timely example of media that offers a vision for Black liberation, which is so much what the film and Darius's poem do. Um, and so. I was I was struck by the line in the first stanza of that poem. Um, a panther zodiac symbol struck a supernova over the head. Um, could you just like talk about that line? I'm just curious if you are making a reference either to the the Black Panthers um, or the film. I'm assuming you wrote it before there was even buzz of the film, but just I just would love to hear your thoughts on any of that. Yeah, I was referencing uh, the Black Panther Party for Self Defense out of okay. Oakland for sure, um, and I definitely think on this new planet. Well, first of all, it was setting up for the line about the cops traveling the uh, traveling outer space looking for something to police to restrict. Mm. Um, so it was just setting up that they were up there with us and that they came to this new planet. And definitely a, a first sign of uh, liberation and that freedom of going to a new place. Got it, got it. Symbol. Um, and let's see. It is it is so empowering to get to produce, whether it's film, radio, or publishing. And I know we can all speak to this, but Karina, I'd love to hear from you your thoughts on that. Well, yeah, my thought is that this is actually uh, producing or creating anything, a filmmaking especially, I think is a public affair. And I say that because yeah. it's always with other people together. It's for other people. And a film, when it's seen afterwards, it gets discussed and it spreads out and ideas come about. That aspect is very, very important for me as an artist. And I think that ties in right here with KPFA, which is a public affair. And everybody needs to show up and needs to give. And I hope you're doing this tonight. Yeah, I and know many people have. But please come and help out. Yeah, because it's, it, it's a public affair. And we all are in this together. And mm-hmm. we really need to help each other out here. Yes, thank you both so much for being here. And and by donating your work, you're also, of course, supporting KPFA. So thank you sin- so sincerely. Um, you listeners have a few more minutes. Uh, it'll go just past 8 o'clock. Uh, your pledges will still count towards this hour. And we at the Apprenticeship Program need that support so much for this hour. So please call 1-800-439-5732. That's 1-800-439-5732. Or one 1- 800 hey kpfa or go online at kpfa.org to pledge securely. Thanks again to all the people on the line. Um, a big thanks to our phone room volunteers um, and to all of you pledging your support tonight. And I believe that does bring us to the end of tonight's show. Again, thank you to Darius. Thank you. And thank you to Karina. Thank you. For joining us. Listen to the film, Finding the Gold Within. Get the book, Conversion Theory. Um, Let's see. Up next week, we have a really special show for you on Full Circle. The women of First Voice come together and celebrate the magic of women in media. Our executive producer is Miss M. Our technical director is Frank Sterling. Joy Moore is our production consultant. We've been your hosts, Audio Desperado, Fran Colbert and Kat Petru. Special thanks to Lauda on the ones and twos and our up and coming apprentices and tech assistants. You still have a moment to call, so please do 1-800-439-5732 or go online at kpfa.org. Thank you so much for tuning in and showing the love tonight on Full Circle. Stay tuned. La Onda Bajita is next.
It is almost 8 o'clock and you are listening to 94.1 KPFA and 89.3 KPFB in Berkeley, 88.1 KFCF in Fresno, and 97.5 K248BR in Santa Cruz and online at kpfa.org. And stay tuned in a bit for La Onda Bajita. (laughs) 